Week 17 has arrived, the playoffs right around the corner. Several games this week with playoff implications. I'd like to talk about a few of them now quickly. Haven't even begun to look at the other games, the games involving non-playoff teams, but we will. As you know, we cover every game thoroughly here on Bet Deck NFL, so I hope you check back with us over the course of the week. But let's talk about this NFL playoff picture and how it's going to sort itself out here in Week 17. Let's start with the NFC because that's a little bit less complicated than the AFC, even though in the AFC all four division winners have been clinched, and in the NFC nobody has clinched their division. But three teams have clinched playoff berths, the Seattle Seahawks, the San Francisco 49ers, and the Carolina Panthers. Now, the Seahawks will win the NFC West and lock up home field throughout the playoffs if they can take care of business against the St. Louis Rams on Sunday. That game in Seattle, Betdeck has not yet released a line yet. The Carolina Panthers will win the NFC South and lock up a first round bye in the playoffs if they're able to beat their division rival Atlanta Falcons. And the San Francisco 49ers, as we said, have clinched a playoff berth, but they can still win the West and lock up a first round bye if they are to beat the Arizona Cardinals this weekend and Seattle were to lose the St. Louis Rams. But we know that the likelihood of Seattle losing to St. Louis at home is not very high. So the Seahawks most likely going to be the number one seed. Carolina is going to probably take care of business against Atlanta. So they're probably going to be the number two seed. San Francisco will probably be one of the wildcard teams. Now, the other wildcard team is either going to be the New Orleans Saints, who are a 13-point home favorite over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this weekend, or the Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals have been playing great lately. They just beat Seattle on the road last week. Hard to believe that this five-loss Arizona Cardinals team, who, if they beat San Francisco on Sunday, will finish the season 11-5, and having beaten Seattle and San Francisco in back-to-back -back weeks. They would miss the playoffs unless the New Orleans Saints were to lose to the Tampa Bay Bucks, which is probably not going to happen. Tampa traveling to the Superdome. As we said, the Saints a 13-point favorite in that game. So it looks like the playoff picture is coming down to Seattle in the NFC West, Carolina in the South, San Francisco and New Orleans as the two wildcard teams. And then, of course, the two play-in games. Green Bay and Chicago play to determine the winner of the NFC North and Philadelphia and Dallas in that much-talked-about Sunday night matchup. Now, a line hasn't yet been released in the Green Bay-Chicago game. That's not a surprise. We have not yet heard whether Aaron Rodgers is going to be able to play or not, and that's obviously going to have a big effect on that line. But the line has been released on BetDAC for the Eagles-Cowboys game. You might have heard Tony Romo has been ruled out for that game. Well, there have been conflicting reports over the last 24 hours. At first, we heard that Romo was out for the rest of the season. And then a few hours later, we heard a report saying he still possibly could play this Sunday. But the latest, what we heard today on Tuesday morning, is that Romo is definitely out this week. Veteran Kyle Orton gets to start for the Dallas Cowboys. Philadelphia, a 7.5-point road favorite in Dallas on bet deck. And I'm going to tell you right now, I think that number is too big. Now, this number was right around pick before it was announced that Romo was not going to play, so most sports folks treating this as right around a seven-point injury. Just not sure it's quite that meaningful. Now, I know Tony Romo is good. Sometimes he's really good. And even though he's, in the past, he's made some crunch time mistakes that have been talked about a whole lot, he's also had some successful moments in crunch time. Most recently, last week, when he threw that fourth down touchdown pass that saved their season against the Washington Redskins. So listen, I, I know Tony Romo is the heartbeat of that offense, no question about it. However, Kyle Orton, one of the better backups in the NFL, extensive starting experience, I believe 69 starts in the NFL, his record right around 500, and Orton's surrounded by some serious talent there in Dallas. I mean, it's not like it's a one-man show with Tony Romo. Des Bryant, one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, Jason Witten, one of the best pass-catching tight ends. DeMarco Murray has really come on over the second half of the season. He's running the ball well. And Philadelphia struggles defensively, as we know. The Eagles, 30th in yards allowed, 31st in passing defense. So Kyle Orton is set up to succeed here. He's playing a bad defense. He's surrounded by really better weapons than he's ever been surrounded by in his entire career. Remember, Orton started his career in Chicago, and then he played for a couple of years in Denver before he was replaced by Tim Tebow in 2011. So Orton's never been surrounded by a whole lot uh, on offense or at least not compared to what he'll be surrounded by on Sunday with all those weapons the Dallas Cowboys have. And even though Philadelphia has been playing great lately, no doubt about it, we saw them beat the Chicago Bears 54-11 to a couple of days ago. The Eagles did lose to Dallas in Week 7 and did not manage a touchdown. Dallas holding them to just three points. I know these two teams are different now. Philadelphia rolling on offense. They're settled at the quarterback position now. They were not settled at the quarterback position when these two teams played in Week 7. 
and Dallas has regressed on defense since then. However, Monty Kiffin, Dallas defensive coordinator, you know, he spent the last few years in college, had to deal with this Chip Kelly offense repeatedly. Kelly had a whole lot of success against Monty Kiffin when Kiffin was coaching the USC defense and Kelly was at Oregon. Kiffin turned the tables in week seven. Just makes you wonder if he might know a little bit more about stopping this Chip Kelly spread attack than some other NFL defensive coordinators. This game is in Dallas. As I said, Kyle Orton, I don't believe, will be quite as bad, or there won't be quite as much of a difference between T Kyle Orton and Tony Romo as some people think. I think 7.5, a, a big number. I do have an early lean towards Dallas as a home underdog in that situation. But the winner of that game will win the NFC East. So, winner of Philadelphia Dallas game wins the NFC East. The winner of the Green Bay Chicago game wins the NFC North. Seattle, Carolina, and San Francisco have clinched, and New Orleans will clinch with a win over Tampa this week, and they're 13-point favorites. That is the NFC playoff picture. If you thought that sounded complicated, wait until we break down the scenarios for the sixth and final AFC playoff spot. Now, as we said a few minutes ago, in the AFC, all four division leaders have been, all four divisions have been decided, that is. Denver has clinched the AFC West. New England has clinched the AFC East. Cincinnati, of course, winning the AFC North. And Indianapolis has clinched the AFC South. Uh, the Colts were the first team in the NFL to clinch. Now, Denver needs just a win this weekend over the Oakland Raiders, and they're a 13-point favorite to lock up the number one seed and home field advantage throughout the playoffs. New England just needs to beat division rival Buffalo, the Patriots a 10-point favorite on BetDAC, and they will lock up the number two seed and a first-round buy. So those most, most likely going to happen, both those two teams, uh, both the Broncos and the Patriots, double-digit favorites, they're probably going to be the number one and number two seeds in the AFC. Kansas City has clinched a playoff berth. The Chiefs are locked into the number five seed. That means their game with San Diego this weekend a little bit unpredictable because Kansas City head coach Andy Reid has already talked about the possibility of resting starters, and that is the primary reason why BetDAC has not yet released a market on that game. That game is significant for a number of different reasons. That's because the Chargers, still in the mix for the sixth and final playoff spot in the AFC. There are four teams fighting for one single playoff spot. That, th those are the Chargers, the Baltimore Ravens, the Miami Dolphins, and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Let's break down how each one of those teams can advance the playoffs. The Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins had it in their grasp. All they needed to do was beat Buffalo and the New York Jets in their final two games, and they were locked up their first playoff berth since 2008. That did not happen, though. As we know, they were shut out on the road in Buffalo. Just a terrible performance, produced only 103 total yards of offense in that game. So now they need a little bit of help. First, they need to win this weekend. The Dolphins hosting the New York Jets, they are a 6.5 point favorite on BetDAC. 41 is the total in that game. So the Dolphins need to beat the Jets, and they need either a Baltimore loss or a San Diego win. Now, why a San Diego win? That might sound a little funny. That's because if Miami is in a two-way tie with Baltimore, and first off, these three, these three teams, Baltimore, Miami, and San Diego, all have the same record right now, 8-7. and seven. We, We'd say that right off. The other team fighting for the sixth and final playoff spot in the AFC, Pittsburgh, they have a worse record. Pittsburgh at 7-8, and eight, so it's harder for them to get in than the other three teams, but we'll get there in a second. So Miami, Baltimore, and San Diego are all at 8-7 and seven right now. If Miami and Baltimore finish in a two-way tie, Baltimore will win that tiebreaker because they beat the Dolphins earlier this season. I remember that game clearly because I was on the Dolphins. It was a painful loss. Now, if it's a three-way tie, if Miami, Baltimore, and San Diego tie, the Dolphins win the tiebreaker there. That's why Miami needs to win, and they need, to ba they need, Baltimore, they need Baltimore to lose or San Diego to win. So in other words, if the Dolphins win and Baltimore loses, the Dolphins are in. Or if the Dolphins win and San Diego wins, even if Baltimore also wins, the Dolphins are still in. You understand? Uh, I know it's a little complicated, and it'll get more complicated here. I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to explain it as we go forward. The Baltimore Ravens, for them to lock up the sixth and final playoff spot in the AFC, they need to beat the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, they're on the road in Cincinnati, and the Bengals a 5.5-point favorite in that game on BetDAC, 44.5 the total. Worth noting, the Bengals a perfect 7-0 at home this season, also 7-0 against the spread. They have been the best team in the best home team in the NFL this year. However, boy, five and a half points feels like a whole lot to me. We know that Cincinnati offense very inconsistent. Nine times this year they've produced 21 points or fewer. And even though Baltimore was torn to shreds by the New England Patriots last week, before that game, really, you look at last week's the, the week 16 game when they 
allowed 40 plus against New England. You look at the Week One game where they allowed 49 to the Denver to the Denver Broncos. In between then, for the rest of the season, Baltimore has played extremely well on the defensive side of the ball. I think they're going to have a lot of success slowing down or shutting down the Cincinnati offense. So five and a half points feels like too many. feels like a big number to me in that situation. But anyway, the Baltimore Ravens need to beat Cincinnati. They also need a San Diego loss or a Miami loss. Either one would do. Obviously, if the Ravens win and the Dolphins lose, the Ravens wouldn't finish with a better record than the Dolphins. But even if the Dolphins win, remember... If San Diego were to lose, that would put the Ravens in a two-way tie with Miami, and as we said, they'd win that tiebreaker. So for Baltimore to get in the playoffs, they need a win and either a San Diego loss or a Miami loss. What about the San Diego Chargers? San Diego with the same record as Baltimore and Miami, but it's a little more complicated for them. San Diego needs to win. They are hosting the Kansas City Chiefs. As we said a few moments ago, the Chiefs might be resting players because they're locked into the fifth seed in the AFC. So Betdeck has not yet released a line on that game for that reason. We don't know who's going to be playing for Kansas City. So the Chargers need to beat the Chiefs, and they need both Miami and Baltimore to lose. The Dolphins, as we said, a 6.5-point favorite over the New York Jets. Baltimore, a 5.5-point underdog against Cincinnati. So if the Chargers can beat Kansas City, and the Ravens and Dolphins both lose, San Diego will make the playoffs. What about Pittsburgh? Believe it or not, the Pittsburgh Steelers still hanging around. And I'll tell you what, if Pittsburgh is able to squeak into the playoffs, they are going to be a dangerous team. I believe of these four teams, Pittsburgh is playing the best football at the moment, but they need a lot to happen. First, they need to win. They need to beat the Cleveland Browns at home. The Steelers a seven-point favorite on bet deck, 43.5 the total in that game. They also need losses from Baltimore, Miami, and San Diego. So, A little bit far-fetched maybe, but not totally out of the realm of possibility. After all, Baltimore is an underdog in Cincinnati. As we said, the Bengals have not lost at home all season. San Diego's playing Kansas City. Now, Kansas City might be resting starters, as we said, but if they're not, even if they're playing most of their starters, I mean, the Chiefs have been much better than the Chargers this season, so you would think San Diego definitely could lose that game. And the Miami Dolphins, how could you rely on them after they just lost 19 to nothing to the Buffalo Bills? Certainly the New York Jets, who have exceeded expectations this season and would finish 500 with a win on Sunday. Certainly the Jets could beat the Dolphins on the road. So the Steelers not out of it. If they beat Cleveland and Baltimore, Miami, and San Diego all lose, then Pittsburgh will lock up the sixth and final AFC playoff spot. So there you have it. Those are your playoff scenarios. Now, the most significant games, I guess, would be the Green Bay-Chicago game, which Betdeck does not have yet have a line on, and the Philadelphia-Dallas game. That's because those are win-or-go-home scenarios. Winner, winner makes the playoffs, they win their respective division. Loser misses the playoffs, goes home, watches the playoffs on television. As I said, I lean towards Dallas as a 7.5-point home dog against the Eagles. I think people, people are making a little bit too big a deal out of the Tony Romo injury because Kyle Orton may be the best backup in the NFL, an experienced guy who's won before in the league, and he'll be surrounded by more talent this game than he's ever been surrounded by in his professional career. So wouldn't be surprised to see the Cowboys keep that one close. Also have a lean towards Baltimore as a 5.5-point underdog in Cincinnati. Expect that to be a low-scoring game. I would also look at under 44.5 there. And look, plenty of more games this week, plenty of games that don't have playoff implications. But so far over these last 36 hours, it's just been so fun to look at these games and go through the various playoff scenarios that these are all I've really focused on. But over the next couple days, we'll be looking at all the rest of the games and we'll preview all of them throughout the course of the week here on BetDAC NFL. So we do hope you check back with us. Until then, for BetDAC NFL, I'm John Arnett. Merry Christmas, everybody.